Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. I actually just took some time away from my birthday and I really missed you guys. So I'm super excited to come back with a free and fun crochet pattern. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, come on in. Now I have another joke for you. I promise this one's really good. Okay, why doesn't Dracula have any friends? Because he's a pain in the neck. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's corny, but I love it. Here at TL Yarn Crafts, I show my crochet love through free patterns, product reviews, and crochet techniques that will blow your mind. So if you're here for all of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos. And also, while you're here, please hit like if you like my videos. It doesn't cost you anything, obviously, but it says a lot to YouTube and it really does help me out. So help us sister out, hit that like button, please. So today I am taking you through one of my favorite patterns, the Bright Side Blanket. It's a deliciously huge throw that pairs perfectly with a good story. And you can find that story with today's video sponsor, Chirp. Chirp is an audiobook service that offers amazing limited time deals as well as affordable everyday pricing on digital audiobooks. Purchase books whenever you want and you get to keep everything that you buy. I personally love Chirp because of their vast selection and they have really great recommendations. Recently I was scrolling through the site for a new Read and I stumbled upon a post called Eight Excellent Cheap Audiobooks You Can Download Right Now. That's how I found the Black Flamingo, which sounds like it's going to be so good. And for just $4, it is totally worth finding out. With no monthly fees and no subscriptions to worry about, Chirp is clearly a no brainer when it comes to audiobooks. And you can save $5 off with my special code CROCHET5 at checkout. Now with that $5 credit, you can basically get your first book for free, so you might as well do it. Check down below in the description for a link to Chirp. Now as I mentioned, we're exploring the Bright Side Blanket today. This project is a constant hit with makers. There are over a hundred posts about it on Instagram and dozens of projects shared on Ravelry. Now I designed this project in the middle of the pandemic. I was low-key going through it, I'll tell you, but I wanted to have something that reminded me that even through a sea of gray, there's always a silver lining, or in this case, a gold one. This project is super beginner friendly with a very simple stitch throughout the body and a fun bobble border that I'm going to take you through step by step. While working on your bright side blanket, I recommend pulling up the free pattern, which is available on my blog, toicblog.com. You can also get a $5 ad-free printable version of the pattern from my website, toyarncrafts.com or go the route of getting an all-in-one kit from Lion Brand. Links to each of these resources are below. Now let's talk materials. The Bright Side Blanket is made with Lion Brand Pound of Love as well as Lion Brand's Basic Stitch Premium. Both yarns fall into the worsted weight category and you can swap out any worsted weight yarn of your choice in this blanket. I just recommend picking a good contrast for the border so it really pops. I'm making a much smaller sample, so I just grabbed some scraps from my stash. The gold is going to be the body and the gray tweed will be the border. You'll also need a six and a half millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. We'll start off with our six and a half millimeter hook in our main color. We're gonna make a slip knot and start our blanket with foundation half double crochet stitches. We'll do that to make sure we have a nice stretchy edge along the bottom of our blanket. So I'm going to make two chains and make these relatively loose because we'll need to work into them. To start the foundation half double crochet, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop in the first chain that we made. So we've got three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through one loop, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. So this is what you should have. Doesn't look like much now, but we'll continue to grow this foundation here. So for our next step, we need to find the loops we're going to work underneath. So if I use my two fingers here and rotate this part towards me, what I can see here is I've got two loops. I've got a loop here and just behind it, I've got a loop here. I wanna get my hook under both of those loops. So I'll start with a yarn over. I'm gonna insert my hook under those two loops right here. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one and then yarn over and pull through three. And we'll do that for each stitch we need on our base. So, so far we have one, two stitches. We'll yarn over, rotate towards us. Here are our two loops on the last stitch we just made. We're gonna insert our hook under both of those loops, yarn over and pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three. So, so far, if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five stitches. So we'll repeat this until we get to the length we need for our foundation half double crochet on our blanket, and then we'll move on to our next row. Okay, so I reached the width that I'm going for, which is not super wide since this is just a sample. If you're playing around with the width of your project, just make sure you start with a foundation half double crochet row that is an odd number of stitches, odd number of stitches. Okay, so now moving on to our next row, we're gonna start with a chain three, and this counts as our first extended single crochet as well as a chain one. We'll rotate our work, and we'll want to skip the stitch that's right here at the base of our chain, as well as the next stitch, and we're gonna extend it single crochet in the following stitch. Here's how we do that. So we're gonna insert our hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then we're gonna yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. Then that's our extended single crochet. We'll follow that with a chain one. We'll skip the next stitch, extended single crochet in the following stitch. So that's insert the hook, under both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, followed by a chain one. Skip one, extended single crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, extended single crochet in the following stitch, chain one. And we're gonna repeat that across. Skip one, extended single crochet, chain one, skip one, extended single crochet, chain one. And your last extended single crochet should go in the last stitch of the row. And that completes the row. Moving on to the next row, we start with a chain three, one, two, Three. Again, that counts as our first extended single crochet plus a chain one. Turn our work. So we're going to skip this extended single crochet right at the base of the chain, and we're gonna go into the next one. So this is what the back of an extended single crochet looks like. We're gonna go into this hole right here. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. Into the next stitch right into that open hole, goes an extended single crochet. In the next hole, extended single crochet. Make sure you follow that with a chain one. And we're gonna work it just like that across the row. And this is basically the stitch for the entire body of the blanket. It gets really meditative, really relaxing. I just love it and it just looks so pretty. So we're approaching this chain three that's here that started our previous row. So we're gonna count up to the second chain, one, two, and place an extended single crochet into that second chain. And that ends row three of our pattern. So you can see that extended single crochet mesh just kind of stacking up on each other. We'll do one more row together. Remember that it starts with a chain three. Rotate the work. Skip the stitch that's right here at the base of the chain. So this is the chain three we just did. This is the stitch at the base of the chain. We're skipping that one and we're going to the next stitch, working into the hole. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That completes your extended single crochet, and then a chain one. Extended single crochet in the next stitch, chain one. 
extended single crochet in the next stitch, chain one. So we'll repeat this until we get to our desired length. You can check the pattern to see the size that I did for the throw. That's free on the blog. Or if you're looking for the other sizes, you'll find them in the actual PDF pattern. And it'll tell you exactly how many rows to do for each of your sizes. We've reached the end of our row again, so we're gonna find our second chain. So there's one chain and the second chain. Insert your hook into that second chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. So we'll just continue working that extended single crochet mesh row until we get to our desired length. And then we have one row to finish it out. We'll then fasten off and move on to our border. So meet me there when you finish your extended single crochet mesh. So now I've got my sample to the size I want it to be. And the last row we need to put on in this main color is a row to make sure that our project matches this first row. So we basically started off with our foundation half double crochet stitches. So we're gonna put a row of half double crochet stitches here across the top. And the way that we'll do that is we're gonna start with a chain two, which counts as our first half double crochet. Turn our work. We're gonna skip the stitch at the base of our chain and we're gonna go into the space. So before we would have worked into this hole of the stitch, we're gonna work in the space between stitches and we're gonna place a half double crochet. So starting with a yarn over, we'll pull up a loop in that space, then yarn over and pull through the three loops that are on our hook. And we'll do that for each space and stitch across the row. So next we have a stitch. We're gonna go into the hole of that stitch, starting with a yarn over, pull up the loop, Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now we'll go into the next space with a half double crochet and the next stitch. The next space and the next stitch. And we'll do that all the way across, placing the last half double crochet in the second chain of the turning chain. So here we've reached our turning chain. So I'm gonna count up one, two chains, insert my hook into that second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So now my sample for the body of my blanket is complete and I can fasten off my gold color. So I'm just going to, from here, cut leaving a nice long tail and I'm gonna lift this loop up and out of my work. And I've now detached the gold from my project and I can move on to my gray. So for my gray, I'm gonna start it right here in this same stitch. I've got my gray color here. And I'm gonna start with a standing single crochet. So I've got a loop here that I'll place on my hook. So from here, I'm going to insert my hook into the last stitch that I finished. I'm gonna yarn over and pull up the loop. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two. So that is now a single crochet stitch. So I did what's called a standing single crochet. Just gonna tuck that end behind. I'm gonna chain two, and then I'm gonna go into the side of this same stitch, so really in the same space where I joined. Let's get this tail out the way again, and place another single crochet here. And essentially I just made a corner. So it's a single crochet, a chain two, and another single crochet. From here I'm going to single crochet in the end of this next row. So if we look at our work right side up, we can very easily distinguish our rows. It gets a little tricky when you're looking at it from the side, so if ever you're having trouble at this first round of the border, just turn your work right side up, find your row end, and then you'll see where you're meant to work into. So I've rotated my work now. I've got my next row end, which is this set of chains. I'm going to actually work into the space underneath the chains, and I'm going to place two single crochet here. So there's one and two. And then I'm gonna place one single crochet at the end of the next row. So just going in the space around the stitch, one single crochet here. Two single crochets into the end of the next row. There's one and two. One single crochet around the next row. So we're alternating two stitches and one stitch. Two stitches.
followed by one stitch. And we're going to do that all the way down this side of our blanket. Okay, so before we do that next corner, I just want to show you kind of what we're doing here. We're just creating a nice, clean, even edge down the side of our blanket. And we're going to do that for all four edges. And it's going to help a lot with like any kind of curving or curling that we have in our project. So I have one more row I need to work around here. It's here. I'm going to insert my hook, complete that single crochet. And now I'm ready to do my corner. So I'm going to chain two, I'm going to turn my work, and I'm going to go right into that same space with a single crochet. And now I'm going to begin single crocheting in each stitch across my bottom edge. So I'm going to start right here, making sure I'm catching two loops of that foundation half double crochet and completing a single crochet here. And I'm going to do that for each stitch across the base. Single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. So now I'm here in the corner and I'm going to, instead of working into this corner because I don't want it to feel too loose, I'm going to work around this last row here. So I'm just going to insert my hook here, chain two, and place another single crochet. And now I can rotate and begin working along this end. So I've placed one single crochet into this first row, so I'm going to go two single crochet into the next row. There's two one in the next row, two in the next row. There's one and two. So for my one rows, I'm going just into this space for one single crochet. For the next row, I'm going around the stitch. So there's one and two. Placing this first border row doesn't have to be precise. You just want to be consistent. So wherever you insert your hook, make sure you do that for each of your stitches. So I've got two going here. There's one and two, one in the next stitch. Two here, one and two, one in the next stitch. Got two and one. Here I have two. I have one row left up here. I'm gonna place a single crochet here, chain two, rotate my work to work along the top edge. So I've got one more single crochet going here, and now I'm going to single crochet in each half double crochet across the top of the row, starting with this next one here. Single crochet, make sure, make sure you're catching both loops of that stitch when placing your single crochets. Okay, so we're back at our first single crochet of the round. I'm going to insert our hook under both loops of that stitch, yarn over, and pull through all loops on my hook for a slip stitch. Do not fasten off, we'll move on to round two of our border. Now we're ready to move on to the second and final round of our border, which is our bobble border. So we're gonna start off with our bobble, which begins with a chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna find the third chain from your hook. So here's one, two, and three. I'm just gonna put my thumb here so I don't lose it. I'll start with a yarn over. I'm gonna pull up a loop in that chain. So I'm gonna pull up a loop, and I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through two. I'm gonna do that two more times. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So that's the second time. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the third time, so I can move my fingers. I've now got four loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. And then I like to tighten it down just to make sure this stays nice and puffy. To finish the rest of my bobble, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. Then I'm going to find the loop right above the, this puff that I made here. So it's this loop right here. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop there, yarn over, pull through two. That's one time. Here's two times. And here's three times. 
four loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all four, tighten down a bit. Now to make this an actual bobble, I'm gonna bring them together towards the front, insert my hook around the base of this chain and complete a slip stitch. So now I have my little bobble here. Now from here, I'm going to chain three. And since this is a corner, I'm gonna skip this chain two space. And then in the next single crochet, I'm going to place a slip stitch. So this is a time consuming border, but looking at how cute this bobble is, it is so worth it. So just stick with it, all right? So now we're gonna bobble again from here. Remember it starts with a chain six. There's two, three, four, five, six. Find that third chain from your hook. Here's one, two, and three. I'm gonna place my thumb there, yarn over, pull up a loop in that chain, yarn over, pull through two. There's one, there's two, there's three, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all four, tighten down a little if you want to. Then we're gonna chain three, find that third chain from the hook, and we're gonna pull up loops right there. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. Yarn over, pull through all four loops on the hook, tighten down. Again, we're going to bring this forward, basically to just close the puff. And as I'm bringing it forward, I'm inserting my hook around that base chain, yarn over, pull through, for a slip stitch. And we've got another puff, all right? So from here, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna skip the next three single crochets along our edge. So this is a single crochet we started with. We're gonna skip one, two, three single crochets and slip stitch in this following single crochet. Now let's do another bobble together. So chain six, there's two, three, four, five, and six. Find the third chain from the hook, one, two, three. I'm gonna put my thumb there, gonna pull up our loops, so yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, so that's one time, here's two times, here's three times. Yarn over, pull through all four, chain three, one, two, three, and pull up loops in that loop just above the previous puff there. So there's one, here's two, and three. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. Gonna bring these together front ways, insert our hook around the chain, yarn over, and pull through for a slip stitch. And that's how we create our puffs. Don't forget to then chain three and skip. Well, let's get the cat hair out of here first. Okay, chain three and then skip the next three single crochets. So this is the stitch we worked into right here, and we're gonna skip one, two, three, into the next single crochet, we place a slip stitch, and we do our bobble again. So just to look at what we have so far, we get this beautiful 3D bobble edge. I just love these, they're so cute and so fun. So we're gonna work these along this edge here, I'm gonna join you back when I get close to this corner because depending on how many rows you worked, you might have to adjust the number of stitches that you skip when you get to the very end just to make this all even out. But it's not precise and if anybody's getting close enough to count your stitches, they're just being rude. Okay, so just join me when you get towards the end of your row. I'll show you how to turn this corner again. I continue to work down my edge and I've now come to where I need to place my last puff before doing my corner, but I worked into this stitch and now I only have one, two, three stitches left. If I skipped these three, it would put me into the chain space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna skip two stitches, one and two, and I'm gonna slip stitch here. This is your blanket, it's your business. Put your slip stitches wherever you want to, okay? So now we're gonna place a bobble. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six chains. Find the third one down, pull up our loops. Here's one. Here's two, here's three. Yarn over, pull through them all. Tighten a little bit, chain three. 
And in the third chain, we're going to pull up our loops. There's one, here's two, and here's three. Tighten it down a bit, pull through, and slip stitch around the chain. At this point, we're going to turn our corner, chain three. Remember that we're skipping this chain two space at the corner here. So I'm gonna slip stitch in this first single crochet after the chain two space and continue with my bobbles. And I'll do that all the way around. So you can see the way that we're working the corner allows there to be a bobble in the corner and that doesn't leave that space bare. But you can already get a feel for how fun and festive and exciting this border is. So just continue all the way around and I'll show you how to finish things up. So I've made it all the way around my piece doing my bobble border. I'm now back towards the beginning. This was the first set of chains for a bobble and here's where I am now. Of course I'd follow this with a chain three, one, two, three. And typically I would go down here and I'd count one, two, three, skip those and work into the next one. But since the following stitch is where it all started, I'm just gonna slip stitch right here and be done with it instead of trying to crowd another bobble in here. So this still feels nice and full and even to me. Okay, so and at this point, I can grab my gray yarn and fasten off, and let's weave in some ends. Since these colors contrast so much, it's gonna be important for us to weave our ends in properly so we can't see them later on. So I have four total ends, two gray ends, one gold end here, and one gold end here. So let's start with the gray ends. I'm actually going to grab these two together. Since this one is so much shorter, I'm just gonna cut this one down to meet it. So it's about here. I'm gonna then thread my two gray ends onto my tapestry needle. I prefer metal, but plastic works just as well. And then I'm gonna work into, I'm now looking at the back of my work and these are the back of my stitches. I'm gonna work into the base of the single crochets here on my border. So they're gray, I'm working with threading in a gray yarn. So I'm just gonna work under several stitches, push through and pull just to make those, make sure those ends are nice and secure. I'll then kind of massage them down into place and then cut off the excess just like that. Now for this gold end, I also want to weave it into a like color. So our last row was a row of half double crochet. So I can actually work right underneath the loops at the base of those half double crochet stitches and pull through. Massage it a little bit just to make sure it'll stay where I put it. And then I can cut it close to the work. One last end over here, gonna thread this on and I can find my foundation half double crochet stitches and work under those loops. Just as long as I'm working under a like color. So gold should be weaved into gold, gray should be weaved into gray. And snip. My blanket's essentially done, but as you can see, I kind of have some wonky edges and it might just be because my sample is small. You probably can't tell on a larger blanket, but you can steam block this lightly. I will include a link on how to steam block your blanket, but otherwise your bright side blanket is complete. And that, my loves, is a wrap on the Bright Side Blanket. I am really curious to see how you like it. Be sure to tag me on Instagram at TL Yarncrafts with your works in progress and your finished projects. And use hashtag Bright Side Blanket. Don't forget, too, to upload to Ravelry so other folks can see your beautiful color combinations. And drop down in the comments and let me know what colors you might use. I'm really considering doing like a red velvet theme, so maybe like a burgundy through the body and like a cream on the border. I don't know. Oh, and while you're down there, if you have ideas for my next video, let me know. So my work day is done, so I'm gonna take my coffee, my audiobook, and my blanket down to the couch. But before I go, of course I'm gonna dedicate this nearly empty cup of caffeine to our new friend. Her name is Laura. Laura, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I'm glad you enjoy my videos and keep learning crochet. I'm sure you're doing a great job. If you enjoy my videos and wanna support my channel, buy me a cup of coffee. Who knows, I might shout you out in my next video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.